Your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Notice the clouds that have increased here tonight. The sun is set on our roofing dog, INET. For you, American camera, that is in Danville. We definitely had a nice array of sunshine throughout most of the day, but definitely being replaced by the clouds here tonight, as you can see on the satellite picture. We'll see those clouds overnight and to start out tomorrow, but the sunshine coming back by tomorrow afternoon, making for another nice day, but kind of chilly. 30 in Champaign right now, 36 degrees in Effingham, 31 in Springfield. Through tonight, we'll see the temperatures back down into the mid-20s and eventually the teens. All right, we'll come back and talk about how long the nice weather sticks around. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. Governor Pritzker delivers his second budget address, but is it really balanced why one of his closest allies says it's not? It's been a long time since I've shaved with a normal razor, and uh, it takes a little practice. And it left him wiping away blood. We'll take you to the homecoming for the former governor after eight years behind bars. To say that we all are X or Y, that's... It's ridiculous. And some campus bar employees are being accused of making racist comments, what some have decided to do in response. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. This budget represents a bridge to the future, where I believe we have an opportunity to change our tax structure so working families are treated more fairly. Governor Pritzker delivered his second budget address today, banking heavily on voters, approving his progressive income tax at the ballot box in November. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The governor said if voters don't approve of his progressive tax, cuts could be coming to education and human services. There's a lot on the line in Springfield with this plan. We have team coverage for you. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mike Maxwell is live at the state capitol. And Gabrielle Franklin is also in Springfield in our Capitol newsroom. First to Mark. So. Is this budget balanced? Jennifer, that's always the big question. And Governor Pritzker, of course, says his budget is balanced. In fact, senior administration officials uh, in the Pritzker camp showed us spreadsheets and slideshows to show that at the end of the year, when it's all said and done, if the governor gets his way, the state will spend less than it takes in in taxes, which would make it a balanced budget. But that's not the whole picture. Re remember, Illinois has a backlog of unpaid bills still piling up. Right now, it sits at $7.3 billion. That's roughly half of where it was just three years ago, but it's also near the highest levels as it was back during the Quinn administration, which those were some pretty dark financial days too. And the lead up to their fiscal ruin we saw in the state in the aftermath. So with the backlog still that high, $7.3 billion, how much would Governor Pritzker commit to paying that down this year. $10 million will go directly to pay down our bill backlog. It's a fly in an elephant's rear end, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't exactly get the job done. Until I can tell you with a straight face that we have no bill backlog, I, you know, I can't say anything is purely balanced. The comptroller of the state, a Democrat who endorsed J.B. Pritzker, says this budget or any budget cannot technically be considered balanced until we do a lot more to pay down those old unpaid bills. And once those unpaid bills reach a 90-day late period, that's when taxpayers are on the hook for 12% in interest penalties. This budget proposal does do something new, though. It, it go goes back to an old, outdated, rainy day fund that uh, hasn't really seen a lot of activity in, in these recent years. But Governor Pritzker says he wants to put more money into that so the next time the economy takes a nosedive, the state is in a better situation to handle it. Reporting in the State House, Mark Maxwell, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Mark, thank you for that coverage. Now, if the governor gets his progressive income tax, people making more than a quarter of a million dollars a year would see a huge jump in their income taxes. Right now, everybody pays 4.95%. That would jump to 7.75% and higher. Lawmakers could change those tax rates and income brackets in the future. Now, the governor's team says he has four key areas he is focusing on in this budget. That's right. They include increasing public safety efforts, investing in the state's rainy day fund, as Mark mentioned, improving health and human services, and educating more students. We continue our team coverage now. WCI 3's Gabrielle Franklin joins us live from our Capitol Newsroom. So, Gabrielle, how does the governor plan to improve classrooms? 
Well, Paul, last year the governor focused on passing some laws to try to lessen the state's teacher shortage. This year he wants state funding to back up those efforts. Now he continues to call on the state to become the best place in the nation to raise a family. He wants the process to start at an early age by increasing the early childhood block grant by $50 million. Another focal point of his is diversifying the state's fleet of teachers. But here's the big sticking point. He's threatened to stop paying the full $350 million extra in K-12 through funding if voters don't approve the progressive tax. Instead, he would only increase that funding by $200 million. But state teachers say they are still pleased with the proposal. What he said is that we're going to continue the momentum um, from last year and making sure that our evidence-based funding model um, for pre-K through 12th grade uh, received more revenue. He also committed to making sure that our colleges and universities that were almost decimated under the last governor are going to continue to be on the road to um, good health, good financial health. The governor also plans to increase MAP grant funding, allotting 15% of MAP awards to community college students. Now, as for public university, the governor says that he plans to increase funding for those programs by about $56 million, but Republicans speaking out against the budget say that he's holding that funding hostage by relying on the graduated income tax proposal to fund them. Paul? Yeah, obviously a lot is weighing on that vote come November. Gabrielle, thanks. Well, from the current governor to a former and convicted felon, Rod Blagojevich is back in Illinois and spoke from his home in Chicago today. It's been a long, long journey. That's right. I'm bruised and I'm battered. I'm bloody. Literally bloody. He was wiping away blood from his chin during his news conference, saying he hasn't shaved with a regular razor for years. He cut himself this morning. Blagojevich was sentenced to 14 years behind bars. President Trump called that ridiculous, commuted the sentence. The former governor expressed deep gratitude to the president. President Trump is a man who is tough and outspoken, but he also has a kind heart. And uh, this is an act of kindness, and I also believe it's the beginning of the process to, to uh, actually turn an injustice into a justice. I'm a Trumpocrat. The Trumpocrat, that's right. If I have the ability to vote, I'm going to vote for him. Blagojevich had 17 corruption charges that he was convicted of. He was convicted in 2011. His crimes included trying to sell an appointment to Barack Obama's vacated Senate seat and shaking down a children's hospital. As for what's next, he says he wants to fight for criminal justice reform. The ex-girlfriend of a man arrested for sexual exploitation of a child is speaking about the relationship. She used to date Cole Montgomery of Danville. He was arrested along with 14 other men in Bradley earlier this week. FBI agents had been posing as minors online wanting to meet and have sex with other minors. The agents arranged to meet with the minors at an address in Bradley. When the men got there, they were arrested. WCI 3's Courtney Bunting is live in our newsroom. Courtney, so did his ex-girlfriend know he was involved in all of this when they were dating? Well, Jennifer, she says she didn't know about this latest case, but Kaylee Holbert did tell me she knew he'd been charged with molesting a 12-year-old girl a year ago, but she didn't know what county he'd been arrested in. I did look into that, but couldn't find any record of that case. Now, Holbert says Montgomery told her he wasn't doing that anymore, and he regretted it. Still, she was uncomfortable with the idea of him being around her three children. She says she broke up with him because of that, and because he was physically and verbally abusive. I'm glad that me and him are not together, but I'm kind of irritated with him because he went and lied to me. I told him, be honest with me from the beginning, and he said he was. And then this story comes up. Holbert says she believes other people in Montgomery's life also knew what was going on, but they didn't report it. And if convicted, Montgomery could face up to 30 years behind bars. Reporting live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Thank you, Courtney. Now, all of the men arrested are from central Illinois. Montgomery is from Danville, another is from Buckley, another from Paxton. We have a full list of the suspects on our website. Just go to WCIA.com. We have an update on a Target 3 investigation. Changes are coming to an intersection where a 5-year-old and a teacher died in Moultrie County. Tyson Mendoza and Lori Samples were killed when a school bus and car crashed. It happened at Route 32 and Bruce Finley Road in September. Today, IDOT released a report. It calls for changing the intersection from a two-way stop to a four-way stop. 
Over the decade, there have been 28 crashes at that intersection. Of those, 22 were turn or angle related. Those are the types of accidents IDOT hopes the changes will stop. The popular campus town bar cams just reopened in its new location, but now they might be losing customers. Yeah, some U of I students say several cams workers said racist comments in a private employee group message earlier this month. WCI 3's Karina Rubio is live in the control room tonight. So Karina, how did the private messages become public? Well, Paul, I talked to a ex-CAMS employee off camera today who was still a part of that group message after she stopped working there. She leaked the screenshots and it blew up, receiving a lot of backlash from angry students. One message from an employee in the chat called Hispanic customers rowdy. Another said they were cheap, broke, and could not afford a beer at the bar. To say that we're all cheap and broke, to say that we all are X or Y, that's, it's ridiculous. It's degrading and it's demeaning and it hurts my own feelings. It just seems to me that there's no sense of respect for our people. I reached out to CAMS management for a comment. Their statement said in part, quote, CAMS had no knowledge of this private chat. A decision was made by a now former employee of CAMS in the name of the bar that disparaged members of the university. CAMS sincerely apologizes for the offensive nature of those remarks and is adamant that such remarks will not be tolerated, end quote. Gabriela Vasquez also created a boycott CAMS Facebook event set for tomorrow night and others plan to protest outside of CAMS. Live in the control room, Karina Rubio. WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Karina, thanks. Some people are using their kitchens to sell food illegally. Find out where public health is cracking down. Also tonight. No one expected us to win this game. No one expected Io to play either. Why, there were two surprises as he helped send the Illini home happy. Quiet night across central Illinois as we look at a roofing die on that Casey Summers camera. That's Matt Toon, and those are your numbers from today. 20 degrees this morning was a chilly start. 36 the high running below normal. Another cold night ahead. We'll talk about when precip returns coming up.